highlights of the 2019 Safari Rally WRC candidate event is proudly brought to you by the WRC Safari Rally project team in partnership with the FIA, WRC promoter, KCB Bank and Kenya Motorsport Federation. Considered the world's toughest rally, Kenya's premier motorsports event, the Safari Rally, has taken a major step in its bid to return to the World Rally Championship. This year's competition is a candidate event for the 2020 World Rally Championship circuit. Famed for its tough driving conditions, the Safari Rally, an iconic African event, last featured on the World Rally Championship circuit between 1973 and 2002. The Safari Rally was notorious for being by far the most difficult rally in the WRC to win. Some had said that winning this particular rally was the equivalent of winning three other rallies. The arduous conditions, such as the constantly changing weather and the very rough roads, often rife with dust and sharp rocks, made life very difficult for team personnel. And the new move of making this year's Safari Rally a WRC candidate event almost confirms the country's dream to have the event back in the top tier of global motorsport circuit in 2020. So buckle up your safety belts. Full highlights of the 2019 Safari Rally WRC candidate event is coming up with every angle covered as usual. This is the 67th edition of the greatest African experience. The clamor for the rally's return to the championship has grown louder lately and as such it has attracted a lot of interest from international teams. Two international WRC works teams Hyundai and M Sport we're here to recce this year's event in readiness for next year's World Rally Championship event that will hopefully include Kenya. This year's Safari Rally kicked off at the Boy International Sports Centre Kasarani in the outskirts of Nairobi where the 48 crews that included four top female navigators had lined up their machines for the ceremonial start. Some of the drivers enlisted in this year's event which doubled up as the FIA African Rally Championship round hailed from Italy, Belgium, the UK, Zambia, Uganda, Tanzania and Kenya. The drivers were upbeat, honoured to race in this legendary event. I'm excited. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a few months waiting to, to get to the safari and uh, we're ready and we want to we wanna win and, and go for it for this year for sure. It's, it's, going, it's going to be a good event. Um, you can already see the difference in the stages, the marking. Um, it's 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 well organized uh, in my opinion. So we're looking forward to a, a nice so nice nice event. I'm excited. Uh, I always look forward to the safari, being one of the oldest uh, rallying events in the region. It's something that uh, is always very exciting. It's a, it's a great honor to be here, and uh, we are ready to have this experience. Uh, we were here in 2017 last. In 2019, again, we have come. You know, it's such a long event, so you go into it uh, uh, with a positive attitude. You try and focus on getting to the end and uh, keeping up with the pace of the front runners and hopefully end out on top. This particular one, we want to take it easy and slow. Uh, just pace ourselves. It's a long rally. Three days is not easy. Uh, some stages are quite rough and uh, you need to be a little bit cautious. And uh, let's see where we pace ourselves and uh, see what we can do on the last day. WRC Project Organising Committee led by the Chairman Phineas Kimathi were over the moon at seeing what started as a mere dream come to fruition. This journey started way back in 2015 and we are almost uh, getting back to where we want to be. I'm sure this event is going to count towards uh, this end. I welcome you to enjoy the 2019 Safari Rally as a WRC candidate event. Thank you very much. Senior WRC and FIA officials were among delegates present to inspect the event and ensure that everything run in line with the WRC format and FIA safety regulations. Kenya 
is already included on our calendar proposal for the inclusion on the WSC 2020 calendar. And um, we are here to cross fingers. We already say thank you for everyone who gave us support to make this happen. Cabinet Secretary of Sports and Heritage Amina Mohammed paid glowing tribute to the efforts being made to reclaim the safari's place in the WRC roster. Today marks a historic moment as we showcase our capacity as hosts and marks a significant milestone in bringing the rally back to Kenya. Your Excellency, I want to thank you for your personal commitment, for keeping the promise Your Excellency made in 2013 to return Kenya to the World Rally Championship circuit. Underline the importance the event holds in the hearts of Kenyans and the desire to return the rally to the world stage, Kenya's President and Commander-in-Chief, His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, was on hand to flag off the cars and offer his government support and commitment to the event. We are committed, and I repeat again, committed to meeting all International Automobile Federation regulations, standards, requirements, so that Kenya may once again feature at the apex of global rally. Sports Permanent Secretary Ambassador Karimi Kaberia, powering a Mitsubishi Evo 9, was accorded the order to open the rally route alongside his navigator and the seasoned rally driver Robert Gao. In Kenya it is really a great opportunity. We look at this with a lot of enthusiasm. We've lost this since 20, uh, 2002. Since then we've wanted to have it back and this is our last test to see if next year we will have it. If we get it back next year, it will be a great relief to all of us and all those who grew up with Safari Rally will be really, really excited. Chief of Staff, Officer of the President Nzioka Waita, navigated by Love and Cliff, was excited to dust off his rallying skills and be part of this event. From the government side and certainly from the President's office, we are doing everything possible to support the running of this event, to participate in, and to encourage Kenyans to come out in large numbers to support the return of the World Rally Championship home to Kenya. And to show the government support for the drive, the president presented the check of $440 million or $4 million towards the World Rally Championship Safari Project. First away and on road sweeping duty would be the reigning and double Africa champion Manfia Barian navigated by Drew Sturrock in their exquisite MRT Skoda Fabia R5. Two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, flagged off by the patron of the Safari Rally. Carl Flash Tundo, the defending champion in his familiar top prime Mitsubishi R4 Evo 10, was seconds away hoping to clinch a historic sixth Safari victory, a feat no one has ever accomplished. Fast rising star Anka Rai and Gareth Dorr, hungry for his first Safari victory, will attack from third on the road in another exquisite Skoda Fabia. Baldev Chaga, the two-time Safari Rally champion, started fourth off the ramp, hoping to regain his Safari crown he last won in 2014. 1994 WRC Safari champion Ian Duncan, the most experienced in the field, navigated by his good friend Anthony Nielsen, will be after another good result. eyes will be on the battle of the champions and to spice up the competition, the best of the rest are led by Zambians Leroy Gomez and Jassy Singh will no doubt mix it up with the front runners. The first day's action took the crews just outside the Moy International Sports Centre for a run through a 4.8 km Kasarani Super Special stage. This was an interesting twin track whereby two rally cars went head to head giving fans in Nairobi a chance to enjoy the event before it went to Nakuru County, where the remainder of the rally was to be held. Being navigated by his long-term pace note reader Tim Jessup, the five-time Safari Rally champion Carl Tundo in his Mitsubishi Evo 10 thrilled the crowd to a mind-blowing action of 3 minutes and 56 seconds, making him the quickest driver to emerge out of the stage. The race to their sixth Safari Rally win was on. The Zambian crew of Leroy and Ursula Gomez were second quickest in the stage, sitting in their fourth Fiesta R5. They hung precisely three seconds and six milliseconds behind Tundo.
Ankarai powering his Cabras Skoda Fabia R5 and then later to be sitting with his navigator Gareth Dorr exactly a year later since 2018's accident displayed excellent driving prowess but lost to his teammate Tunno by a mere three seconds and finishing only one millisecond behind Gomez. Third place was not so bad for a start. Another Zambian, Jassy Singer, driving a Subaru Impreza R4 and being navigated by Sajid Khan managed position four in this stage. Jassy, the 2013 Africa Rally Champion, who hasn't been so lucky with the Safari Rally Gods, only hoped that his third attempt would change this story. The reigning Africa Rally Champion, Manvia Barian, slid his Skoda Fabia R5 to position five, meaning only four seconds separated him from the leader. Manvia has been under pressure, especially from his fans all over Africa, to bag the Safari Rally Champion title. Tejvir Rai and Gavin Lawrence were having an amazing race, and their Cabras Evo 10 did not disappoint. The crew pushed to a comfortable sixth position, missing the top place by five seconds. Shaking down the competition at the top was Ian Duncan, navigated by Anthony Nielsen in their Mitsubishi Evo 10. The champion missed last year's safari, but was back to fight for this year's title. He played it cool in this stage, managing a seventh overall position. Rwanda's crew of Giancarlo Davite and Silvia Vindervogel, blasting in their Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 10, finished eighth overall, clocking a time of four minutes and 19 seconds, only 13 seconds separating them from the leader. Three times Uganda champion Ronald Sebuguzi, with his space note reader Leon Seyange, pushed their Evo 10 to a comfortable ninth position, representing Uganda in the top 10. Boldev Chaga and Ravi Soni were caught in Ankarai's dust, which slowed them down due to poor visibility. The two-time Safari Rally winner had a difference of 13 seconds and 8 milliseconds from his teammate Tundo, which threw him into an unaccustomed 10th position. Nonetheless, it was too early to mistake a rained on lion for a cat. More action exploded and dust was everywhere from the other competitors as the Safari Rally rhythm started to take position. Notable highlight of the day was Jonathan Soman and Richard Heckel driving a Ford Escort classic car. Footage from the in-car camera shows them enjoying the rhythm when this happened. Their windscreen literally came off and surprisingly still intact. Our film crew was able to capture how lucky they were to get back on their feet. Jonathan and Richard were unhurt, and to the delight of the fans, raced to finish the stage in spectacular fashion, leaving their windscreen behind. One minute and 47 seconds stood between him and the overnight leader, Carl Tundo. So Tundo carried the day, but could not relax since the crown was in danger. Wearing it throughout the rally wasn't going to be easy, but it was a puzzle he needed to unravel. Leroy Gomez in second and Jassy Singh in fourth place, making sure they split the Kenyan Skoda Fabias of Ankarai in third and Manfi Barian in fifth. The rest took privileged positions, except Boldev Chaga, who was in an unfamiliar tenth position. Gatamayu, the 13.60 km second stage of the day, was cancelled due to adverse weather conditions. All the 48 cars that were flagged off the ramp completed day one's task. It was very early for any team to celebrate, as stage one was child's play. 
but enormous challenges and surprises awaited them in the Rift Valley stages. As always, it was going to be a very nerve-wracking two days of motorsports action as the cars parked for the overnight park Fermi at Sopa Lodge. The stages were not strange to the crews. They were slightly different from last year's, but still stamped the Safari Rally signature of tough, rough, dusty and tricky. The first stage of the day was the 23.86 km Soy Sambu stage, and spectators were in a position to see the action in close range. The second stage was the 15 km Elementita stage, and the third 27.14 km Sleeping Warrior stage. The crews would cruise through the stages twice with a service in between. First on the road was Manvia Barian, who has swept all the continental accolades in his Skoda Favia R5 except the Safari Rally title. His aim and mission in this race was to ensure he finishes and in a commendable position. In the first loop, Manvia was expected to lose buckets of time, but he had none of it. He flew through the three stages, setting very fast benchmark times in all the stages. All the stages went well except for Elmantaita, where we got some giraffes on a long straight. But um, other than that, um, it, it was a good run through all the stages. The Safari Rally title defender Carl Tinder and birthday boy Tim Jessup were alert of the teams behind them, coming in fast and quickly closing the gap. He put on a good race, but it was not long before he encountered problems with the car and lost a minute and a half at the Soy Sambu stage when the car stalled after a river crossing. First leg started off badly. We went through quite a deep um, river. And the car stalled for about a minute and a half. We lost a minute and a half. Tim had to get out, clean the air cleaner. Then kind of tried to make up time. So we're about a minute and a half behind due to that water. Um, otherwise it would all be okay. The game at the top now completely changed and Tundo kept it neat over the next two stages, setting the second fastest time at the Elementida stage and third fastest time in the Sleeping Warrior stage keeping in mind it wasn't easy to make up for a minute or so with the Skodas in sight. After the first loop he was placed fourth overall. Flying the Cabras flag high was Onka Rai, who set off third for loop one, eager and focused to make it to the top by the end of the race. He won the element either stage, and maintained the top five position in the other two stages. Uh, we started off fairly well. Um, I think we could have been a bit faster going around, but it is what it is, and we we kept up there in, in the times. Experience for Boldev Chaga came in handy in this loop. Starting off 10th, Boldy knew it was going to cost him an arm and a leg to jump to the top. Foot on the pedal, he propelled his Evo to lead the Soy Samba stage and was guns blazing in the other two stages, setting the third and second fastest times to launch himself at the top of the leaderboard after three stages. Managed to outpace Manvia Barian by just two seconds and four milliseconds. We took risks and uh, we were faster. Uh, stage two, we were slightly faster. I can't remember stage three. It's been really, really, really tight if you look at the top four cars. Um, 
it's been just a couple of seconds being swapped here and there and it's become really hectic. <laughs> Zambian ace Leroy Gomez was having a challenging first loop. The water splash at Soy Sambu messed up the car and he had to nurse it throughout. He however finished fifth with a two minutes and nine seconds difference from Jagger. The duo of pace note reader Gavin Lawrence and Tejvir Rai was working well and they were sensational in this loop. They settled for a sixth position, which was absolutely commendable. The legend Ian Duncan, navigated by Anthony Nielsen, were having a hard time keeping up with the top four after they bent their steering wheel in the Soy Sambu stage. In his true sportsmanship fashion, he maneuvered through the other two stages and finished at position seven. Jassi Singh and Sajid Khan, in spite of their car misfiring all through, weathered the storm and limped out of Luke One, lying eighth overall. It takes two to tango, and Kos Pekea's Itza Mirza, navigated by Kavid Dave, kept it going amidst the minor challenges they faced. They came out three minutes and 28 seconds behind the leader to sit at position nine. Giancarlo Davite and Lady Navigator Sylvia Vindervogel were having a hard run in the first loop as the rhythm had not caught up with them yet. They however put on a spirited fight to close the top 10 bracket. Boldev Chaga and Ravi Soni fought tooth and nail to wear the crown when loop one ended. Only two seconds kept Manvir Barian and Drew Sturrock from the number one position. Uncle Rai, driving the second Skoda in the race, secured third position. Day one's overnight leader Carl Tunder kept his nose to the grindstone and scooped fourth position. It took blood and sweat for Zambia's sensational Leroy Gomez and Ursula Gomez to back fifth place. Placed at positions six, seven, eight, nine, and ten were Tejvir Rai, Ian Duncan, Jassi Singh, Itza Mirza, and Giancarlo Davite, respectively. After a treacherous first loop, it was time for the cars to dust off and the organizers had a surprise car wash for the crews just before they got into the Sober Lodge service park. At the service park, it was a beehive of activity as the service crews conducted frantic repairs within a limited time of 30 minutes. The service crews knew it was a race against the clock and any prolonged repairs would be penalized and added to the elapsed time of the competitors. Speed, accuracy and efficiency was all that mattered. In the second loop, stages 6, 7 and 8 were the same three stretches of dusty roads that were used an hour ago. The crews were now aware of all the dangers as they now believed that they could go even faster. The double African champion Barian unveiled his true colours and immediately dethroned Chaga. He won all the stages in blistering pace, pushing his MRT Skoda to the limit, and by the end of day two, Manvir was exactly where he wanted to be. At the top of the leaderboard, having recorded his fourth successive stage victory, despite getting a puncture two kilometers to the end of the Sleeping Warriors stage. The second leg was uh, better, we tried to push harder, and I think everybody else did as well, and they normally do on the second uh, round through. Yeah, and um, we made it here. We got a puncher in the last stage, um, last two Ks to the end, but we managed to drive on that. It's, it's still anybody's race, so it's a long day tomorrow. Yeah, we'll see what it has for us. The Skoda drivers were having a spectacular race. Onkar Rai had made it clear that he was going for the crown no matter what. <laughs> At the end of the day, he steadied the ship and turned the tables on Boldev to shoot past him into second in the overall standings, catching sight of the crown just 12 seconds away from the new leader, Manvir. It 
tomorrow we have to push uh, Max tomorrow to, to try and get that win. With Carl Tunder playing catch-up, Boldev saw an Boldy. opportunity and took the fight with the Skodas head-on. Staying strong as a steel gate was Boldev's new mission, as he was very aware that sitting on the throne was going to be extremely tough. Chaga and Sony wanted to take the crown back and keep it to themselves. But the Skodas were too fast, and by the end of the day, he sat 19 seconds and 4 milliseconds behind Manvir. I think exactly what we've done today is the only thing we can do tomorrow. I just push as hard as we can, because these Skodas are not easy to keep up with. We're really, really pushing these old Mitsubishis hard. <laughs> For Carl Tundo, the truth that a minute plus was what kept him out of the top three bracket was a bad taste on his tongue. But he kept his head down to stay in control of his fourth place position overall and in fact extended his advantage over fifth place. I would have preferred to be in the top three and a lot closer, but uh, the top three are only 19 seconds between them. So they're going to be all be pushing, so we hope something goes wrong for them. And fifth place in question is the master Ian Duncan, who hung on tight to that position throughout all the stages, but the gap between him and Tunda had widened to 1 minute and 24 seconds, and the daylight 5 minutes and 8 seconds behind the leader Manvir. Yeah, I mean, we're not exactly on the same pace as the top guys, but we, I think we're coming fifth, and it's not so bad. But the Subaru Impreza of Jassi Singh and co-driver Saji Khan were slowly reeling in, and smartly tiptoed from 8th position in loop 1, and shot past his teammate Leroy Gomez and back to 6th position. For us, we had issues from day one, from the, from the first stage. Today, our cars been misfiring throughout, so we're trying to limp, and we, are now, we now have a 45-minute service, so we'll try and see if we can fix it now and for tomorrow. It's been a long, rough day, but all good. With only 26 seconds separating them, Leroy Gomez was closely following his Zambian counterpart, Jassi Singh, in position 7. But it wasn't getting any easier for Gomez in his second attempt on the safari rally. Wow, safari. Oh, that, that's all you have to say. It is the safari. I mean, very challenging. I think for any driver, uh, driver in in Africa or from anywhere else that comes, in, you know, in the world, it will be a challenge. Um, just when you think everything's going good, there's always a surprise. And. Uh, you know, we started very well in the, the second uh, last loop on, on Sir Sambo, went through the one water splash, we went extremely slow, still had a problem, so it doesn't matter, so you, know, you just have to drive, but you know what, uh, hats off definitely to the Kenyan drivers, amazing drivers, the top five drivers are just amazing. Rwanda's duo of Giancarlo Davite and Sylvia Vindervogel held on to their plan throughout the day and comfortably finished eighth overall. Apparently we are eighth. So my, my aim was to finish top 10, I'm there, we'll see tomorrow. Ninth place was Kenya's Itza Mirza and Navigator Kavit Dave in the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 10. Jasmine Chana and Ravinda Chana's efforts paid off. and they made the top 10 list. So at the end of the day, it was Africa's reigning champion at the helm, having been exceptional in the stages. His rival Onkarai slipped to second position, with Boldev Chaga sliding in third. Tundo painfully took the fourth place on the leaderboard. Ian Duncan was in the top five, while Zambian Jassi Singh came in at position six. Having a lump in his throat was Ugandan Ronald Sebubuzi. He seemed to have misfortunes from the onset. The poor start as signs of things to come, and soon after his car stalled at a river crossing. Later the engine cried enough, and Ronald suffered untimely retirement in the first stage of the day. The safari hunger pangs started kicking in and quickly hunted down the Mitsubishi Evo 10 of Eric Bengi, navigated by Tuta Miyonki, sidelining them in stage 6.
Another Ugandan, Abdul Katete, and his bass note reader, Mohamed Rama, also hit the frame, driving a Subaru Impreza and retired on Sai Samba Stage 6. The third crew to unwillingly slam the door was that of Amar Haka and Victor Okundi, driving a Mitsubishi Evo 10. Outside the top 10, the chasing pack was led by the fastest Ugandan Walubi Kepa, driving his Evo 10 in 11th overall position. Yeah, I At least in the top 10, it's a That's my strategy. From Mombasa, Minesh Ratod powered his Mitsubishi Evo 10 to finish 12th position. The Shamba Boys crew of Mahesh Halai and Ketan Halai were the second fastest Subaru and now in 13th place. Uh, the idea is to keep the car steady, keep it steady pace, steady through the stages, not to break anything and to bring it back home. Yasin Nasser, navigated by Ali Katumba, were the second fastest Uganda crew and now in 14th position in their WRX Subaru Impreza. Uh, I think we'll continue the way we did today. Uh, be cautious and take it as it comes. But we'll be more cautious tomorrow so that we can come back to the finish line. From Mombasa, another racing family that's carried on the safari rally tradition for generations, it's the uncle and nephew crew of Paris Pandya and Falgun Bojack. They were now in 15th position overall. Well, for us, you know, it's a passion, you know, childhood passion. Our uncles and grandfathers also used to do it from the 50s, 60s, 70s. So we're just carrying on the tradition and it's also just a hobby for us. We don't have any other hobbies like golf or anything, so we do rally. A lot of racing was also happening in the other categories outside the Premier class. In the S-Class category, Pui Singh, navigated by Adnan Din, was leading in this class and now in 16th position. Nine seconds behind him was John Nganga, who had dropped to second position in this class and in 17th position. Lovejot Singh and Harshil Limbani were now third in the S-Class and 20th overall. Sensational youngster Karen Patel, navigated by James Mwangi, back in their old Subaru GC8, were fourth in the S-Class and in 21st position. The only crew representing Tanzania, driving a Subaru Impreza was that of Emmanuel Lima and Ali Mustafa, were fifth in the S-Class and in 25th position. Ken Tere, co-driven by Edwin Dukui, were sixth fastest in this class and 26th overall. Kenneth Kamal, Edward Miner, Adil Mughal and David Keone finished the day in 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th in the S-Class category. In the SPV class, Duncan Mubiru, best known as King Kankane, was leading in this class and 19th overall. First leg was not okay for me. I enter and deliver. Actually, I'll find many cars that were there, but I managed to, to, to get off the river. And I go slow, slow. That's why I dropped in the third position in those two stages. Second in this class was handicapped driver and motorsports personality Nikhil Sachania navigated by Deep Patel. They were 22nd overall. Third in this class was the Range Rover of Jeff Mays, and here we ride on board as his navigator Suzanne Swager guides him on the stage. Fourth in the SBV class was Akif Virani and Azar Bhatti in the Subaru STI. The classic cars were well represented in this event. 
Jonathan Sermon was back in form and was once again recording impressive times in his Ford MK2 Escort. He was leading the classic class by miles. Let's ride on board as Richard Heckel calls the notes in the African grasslands. Yeah, go next. Another easy brow. Yeah. Into a right two. Uh, 150 left two into right two cut. Did we get scared there? Yeah. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> left two into right three, 200 right six. Trust me, we both were. <laughs> Today, uh, I believe in our class, we've managed to catch up all the five minutes and uh, we're going quicker and quicker throughout the day. Today, I believe for the last stage, we've come in 16, so we're very happy. I got it. 50 left six, don't cut. I was scared. <laughs> left six, don't cut. The second fastest classic car was the Ford Escort MK2 of Kailash Johan and Tarek Malik. <laughs> The third fastest classic car was the beautiful Ford Escort MK1 of Hardes Sira and Sinda Sudil. From the UK, John Lloyd, navigated by Quentin Mitchell, was at the tail end Charlie of this class in yet another Ford Escort MK2. In the two-wheel drive or F2 class, Darren Miranda, co-driven by Wayne Fernandez, were flying away in their Toyota Sprinter way ahead in their class. Uganda's Jeffrey Insereko and John Sisi were second in this class in their Toyota Run-X. Multiple F2 champions Leonardo Varesi and Kigo Karethi were third in this class and getting used to their new Sport Pesa Run-X. Kirit Rajput, navigated by Kashif Sheikh, were last in this class and tail end Charlie in 44th position in their BMW 325i. The Chief of Staff, Officer of the President, was still in the race. Navigated by Love and Cliff, the crew finished day two in 23rd position. We, we, we had a few, one or two mishaps. But we kept the car on the road and uh, we are looking forward to tomorrow. McCray Kimothi, being the youngest driver in the competition and through the guidance of longtime navigator Evans Mwenda, went all out pushing his Subaru Impreza to 24th overall position. Despite having a broken drive shaft and a bent arm, Kimothi was uncontrollably happy to still be in the race as day two's curtains rolled down. I'm very happy just to be here, you know, I'm like, oh my god, we just, I was like, the rain was coming in and I'm telling my co-driver, if we're able to make it, then I think we have finished the safari. So, I think I've gotten the real gist of what a safari is, everything can happen, um, so many cars have dropped out, and as long as you just keep moving, you're just, you're just okay. To be in the finish line, I think you, I'll be so relieved at this point, it's not even about the result. <laughs> Hussein Malik, navigated by Lynette Ayuko, was getting used to his new Mitsubishi Evo 10. His last safari was in 2015, where he finished in 26th position in an S-Class Mitsubishi Evo 6. He was now in 29th position and happy to still be in the race. If I can sort my car out, tomorrow will be a quick day for us. Uh, we have tested the Evo now, we have seen uh, what we are capable of doing. The Evo can still do much more, but uh, according to driving it, I think it's settling in. So if the car goes, uh, is fixed well, tomorrow we'll go for it, we'll push. His uncle Moez Malik, also in the new Subaru Impreza, was still in the race and in 32nd position. Forty-four cars made it to the finish. The battle was still on and no one would comfortably sleep with six stages still pending. the top three teams, butterflies had found a new home in their stomachs. It was still anyone's race. And at the end of the day, the crews had to prepare for day three.
Day 3 saw the crews tackle the last three stages of the rally, which were going to be repeated twice. That is the 6.31 km Malewa stage, 11.42 km Lodia stage, and 38.53 km Kidong stage, which was the event's longest stage. This was going to mercilessly separate the men from the boys. Again, it was Barian on top of the road sweeping roster. He won the first stage and maintained second position on the other. Coming into the Kidong stage, he was red flagged down as the safety car was still in the section and he had to drive slowly out of the stage. Going into the last, into the Kidong stage, um, we had to drive through the stage. We were stopped halfway by the uh, red flag. And the reason for that was uh, the controller had been instructed to not let us out, as I think the safety cars were still in the stage. But uh, he still let us out at a normal time. So I th uh, let's see what they do now. But in normal, normal circumstances, they give you the fastest time off the stage. Yeah. Yeah, as it was nothing to do with us. When day three commenced, Okarai was determined to close the gap and take the mantle from Manvir. In the first stage, he was exactly three seconds and five milliseconds behind him. Things were looking promising until he got into stage two and the table flipped. When it rains, it pours. Onka Rai, navigated by Gareth Dorr, rolled and they were out of the safari for the second time in a row, just seconds from clinching the win. With his teammate out, Chaga now took the battle to Manvir's doorstep. And when he came out of loop 2, only 29 seconds stood between him and Manvir. Well, we're lying second, but Flash is on a charge. Uh, Manvir is not slowing down, so neither am I. It's not over till we get to the end, so we'll see how it goes. There is a saying that goes, one man's misfortune is another man's joy. Tunda grabbed the opportunity that came his way and was now dancing in third position. The wing was still a minute away and no one was slowing down. He was lucky his position was not in danger, as Ian Duncan was lagging behind by a record 5 minutes and 55 seconds. We're going alright, no problems. We've still got three sections to go, but we're going okay. The stages were very tricky and rocky. Having that in mind, Ian Duncan knew it was going to be extremely difficult to catch up. Fourth position was good enough for him, and looked forward to defending it until the end of the race. I don't know if we can get on the podium, otherwise fourth is good. If we can still keep our position, we'll be happy with that. Keep it going. The battle between Leroy and Jassy on who was going to fly the Zambian flag high was still on. The fourth Fiesta of Leroy emerged fifth by the end of the first loop, giving him a 1 minute and 23 seconds lead over Jassy Singh. Jassy Singh was smoothly and carefully racing, knowing this might be his first ever chance to finish the safari. Position 6 was well in. Finishing this loop in 7th position was Giancarlo Davite and Silvia Vindervogel. Tejvia Rai reappeared on the Super Rally ticket and came in straight to position 8. Our rally was over yesterday, so today we're just on the Super Rally. Um, we're just to get some seat time and some fun. Jasmine Chana and Yasin Nasa came in 9th and 10th positions respectively. Mm -hmm. 
so the top three positions went to Manvir Boldev and Flash. Ian Duncan fixed himself at position four, and Leroy Gomez rounded off the top five. This loop insensitively plucked nine cars out of the race, leaving only 35 cars to compete in the second loop. In rallying, and especially in the Safari Rally, it's not over until it's completely over, and for the top three contenders, the tension had built up and was palpable going into the final leg. Only good luck was going to see them through. For the Skoda crew, this was it. It was going to be the first time to have a Skoda grace the Safari Rally podium in top position. The title was theirs, and they were going for it full force. Manvir went flat out and finished first in stage 12. Boldev threw caution to the wind in a valiant effort to stop Manvir's steam roller, but on this occasion, the Cabras's Mitsubishi could not keep up with the Skoda. He was second fastest and 5.6 seconds slower. However, in the penultimate stage 13, Carl Tunda emerged the fastest, and Boldev matched Tunda's pace to the millisecond and recorded the exact stage winning time. With just one more stage to go, Manvir remained on form and pushed his Skoda to set the third fastest time, just 2.6 seconds slower than the Mitsubishis of Boldev and Tundo. Now it was the last and final stage, the 38km Kidong stage left to determine the all-important podium positions. By now the stage was loose and the soil soft like a spider's web, Kidong stage was a mess. The Maasai had labelled the stage Nakuro, meaning the dust place, the place of shifting grounds, the place of the dust devils. Manvir was first to take off. Followed by Boldev Chaga, who was not going to give up without a fight. Just 29 seconds separated him from Manvir. Tundo, the reigning champion, took off from third position, hoping that the two drivers ahead of him will falter as they fought for first position. Manvir, who had led from the end of day two, was well on target to claim the final step of the coveted Safari Rally podium. But it wasn't to be. Unfortunately, the volcanic dust blocked their radiator and choked the car to a grinding stop. The Skoda Fabia engine endured more punishment than it could take. <laughs> Meanwhile, Boldev and Sony smelt blood. They could see Manvir's dust trail close by and knew they were within striking distance. He increased his pace, hunting the Skoda down with his Mitsubishi sliding through the dust like a jet ski on water. Like a cheetah, he pounced on the road. For Manvir and Drew Sturrock, it was too late to salvage their lead. From the horizon, they saw their wind go down the drain as Baldev Chaga and Ravi Sony passed him on the roadside. Baldev Chaga and Ravi Sony were probably the most tensed crew in the race. They could tentatively tell they were champions in waiting. However, the race was not over. Carl Tunder and Tim Jessup had no intentions of making any mistakes on the stage. For them, anything and everything was possible as long as they were still in the race. Manvir's misfortune now turned into a nightmare and to rub salt to the wound, Tunder caught up and flew past Manvir who was now quickly tumbling down the leaderboard. Tunda was more than happy to inherit the second position, and with less than 15 kilometers to go, he was now on full attack mode, breathing down the neck of Boldev. 
the podium top position, which seemed too far from reach, was now just a few seconds away. Manvir was lucky to get his Skoda back on track. It would have been extremely painful to retire on the last stage at just a few kilometers to the finish. He had been the fastest driver so far in the rally and now struggling for a podium position. But the race was still on. At the Kidong time control point, Confucian was hanging in midair as everyone watched the finish line from afar, wondering who the champion was going to be. Was it going to be Manvir, Chaga or Tundo? What had happened inside the stage? These were some of the many questions that no one seemed to have an answer. They say the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. It was the crew of two-time Safari Rally champion Boldev Chaga and Ravi Soni that emerged victorious. After starting in 10th position in day two, they impeccably and consistently climbed to the top position in a way they couldn't express in words. It's crazy. Uh, we passed Manvir on the side of the road. I, I, I don't know what's happened to him. I think he must have gathered a lot of dust or something, one of the, the ruts. But here we are. Now we just need to see Flash's time. I doubt if he's picked more than 47. Yeah. I think we had 47 seconds difference be before we started. So we have to wait, but I think we won. Thank you. How are you feeling, guy? We have won. Well, tentative beat. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Ravi! <laughs> yes. This is it! We kept it there, man. We kept it there, we kept it going. Yeah. Kept the pressure, good. kept yeah, everything it's been going. Excellent. It's been amazing. Everyone's done such a good job. The team, everything has just worked really well. Uh, the competition has been so immense. I've never done a safari so intense in my whole life. I mean, before it was Onkar, then it's been with Flash, with Monveer. I mean, with the modern timing, we've been trying like one stage we had exactly scratch time with Tundo, which is, how, how does that happen? It's a bit impossible, but yeah, we have yesterday 0.2 seconds, so it's very, very hectic. And to think we were lying 10th on day one. Again. Yeah, <laughs> we've come a long way. We've come a long way. Yes, yes, it's been a long really feel, man? It's sinking in now. <laughs> Let's get to the end and yeah, it should all sink in. All Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. With the threat all of right. Manvia Thank removed you. from the equation, Last year's Safari Rally winning team of Carl Flash Tunder and Tim Jesso clocked the fastest time in this stage. And at the time control end, it was close and only hoped that Boldev had issues. Did Boldev have any problems? <laughs> okay. Uh, interesting stage, really. Rhino charge rough, but you've seen the, my windscreen, my bonnet, my boot, everything is broken. So it's good. Good that it's the end, but it was fun. Carl Tunda missed to defend the title and the chance to clinch an unprecedented 6th Safari Rally victory by only 33 seconds and 6 milliseconds. Second position was still superb for them. Obviously not what he went out seeking, the Safari Rally title having been so close yet so far. Manvir painfully nursed his Skoda Fabio to take 3rd position. And this is what it's all about. The chavish in glory and sweet taste of victory champagne in the Safari Rally podium. And what a time for Boldev Chaga to taste it. The 2019 Safari Rally champion. After a brutal, back-breaking and unsparingly demanding three days of nothing but the best rally action, the 67th edition of the Safari Rally did not disappoint. Confirmation that Boldev Chaga and Ravi Soni are now three-time Safari Rally champions and the 67th edition winners. Carl Tuna gets a good result and second place. And a very dominant performance from Manvir Barian, who almost led from flag to flag, but podium finish was a great result from the reigning Africa champion. The great Ian Duncan and his navigator Anthony Nielsen came in at number four. Zambian driver Leroy Gomez and Ursula Gomez sealed the top five position. Jassy Singh and Saji Khan, also from Zambia, had finally broken the Safari Rally jinx and took the sixth position overall. Rwanda's finest Giancarlo Davite and Sylvia Vindervogel happily settled for position seven. Gavin Lawrence, holding Tejvia Rai's hand, managed eighth position overall. At position 9 was the Ugandan team of Yasin Nasser and Ali Katumba. 
The amazing team of Mahesh Halai and Ketan Halai wrapped up the top 10 list. 29 out of 48 cars finished the rally, making every result a victory. Karen Patel and James Mwangi in a Subaru Impreza GC8 finished the Safari Rally in 11th position overall and also won the fiercely contested S-Class category. Winning the SVV class category were Ugandans Duncan Mubiru and Musa Nsubuka in at number 13, beating their rivals Nikhil Sachanya, Jeff Mays and Aki Virani. The winners of the classic car class were the impressive Jonathan Soman and Richard Heckel, who stood the test of time, being the only classic car to finish the rally and in 25th position. The only Tanzanian crew of Emmanuel Limo and Ali Mustafa finished in 19th position overall to the delight of their fans. The youngest rally driver in the race, 23-year-old McCray Kimathi, finished his first ever attempt of the Safari Rally in an impressive 22nd position. Chief of Staff and Zioka Waita and his navigator Laban Cliff finished in 24th position, one hour, 24 minutes and six seconds behind the leader. Now I don't really care, even if we're at the end, even if we're last, I don't mind. Just finishing was enough. <laughs> I just needed my boss to know I can drive. <laughs> what an amazing rally this was, from Kenya's capital right down to the slopes of the Great Rift Valley. It is our hope that the WRC, FIA and all stakeholders involved find it fit for the Safari Rally to return to the WRC calendar in 2020. Fingers crossed, I'm Sean carter -Villis. Thank you.